Hello everyone, my name is Ashok. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today with this video, I am going to start a new series on LWC interview preparation with questions and answers. In which I will create multiple videos and will start from basic to advanced questions. Okay. So today in this video, I will start with basic LWC questions and as you move further, we will cover advanced questions as well in future videos. Okay. So let's get started. So the first question is what is LWC? Lightning Web Components. So we can say LWC is a client side JavaScript framework that built on top of latest web standards like custom elements, templates, shadow dome, decorators, modules, and latest version of ECMAScript. And also we can say LWC is a new programming model that is introduced by Salesforce to develop Lightning components. Previously, Lightning components could be developed by using the Aura component framework, but now we can develop the same Lightning component with LWC as well. And we can use those LWC components inside Salesforce, like in on App Builder pages, community, on Aura pages, I mean Aura components, Visual Force pages, and in Quick Actions also. And outside of Salesforce server as well, we can use um, those Lightning components with Lightning Out feature, but that is in beta version right now. Okay, so main thing is LWC is a client side JavaScript framework. It means whatever code we have written in our component that will execute at client end, not on the server. Client means wherever we are running our application, like our browsers. Okay, so this is the very basic definition of LWC. So now let's jump to the next question. That is LWC framework. If someone asks you to explain LWC framework, then you can answer that question like this. LWC used most of the core components or the element of our latest web stack and on top of those provide a layer of specialized salesforce services like lightning local service lightning data service and lightning base components it means lwc mostly use web stack features like as you can see over here in in this image in bottom part like web components templates custom elements shadow dom modules equal script event and standard elements and rendering so all these are the part of standard web stack. So we can say LWC mostly use core features of JavaScript. And on top of that, Salesforce added their few layers for security and data and for base components. Like for security, Salesforce added Lightning Locker service. For data communication, Salesforce added Lightning Data Services. And for pre-built components, Salesforce added base lightning components. Okay, so we can say LWC is the combination of web standards and Salesforce metadata. Now, next we have what are the advantages of using LWC? So the first advantage is LWC use latest web standards. So as we have seen in previous slide, LWC support most of the latest web standards like custom elements, templates, shadow dome, and decorators. Next is easy to learn. Now, as we know, LWC use native web standards, or we can say generally in LWC we write code in standard JavaScript and HTML. So, if anyone has experience on JavaScript or web development, so they can easily work on this. Like if a developer has experience in Angular then he can quickly get a start with LWC as well because both follows the uh, web standards so it would be easy for the developer to get a start with LWC so we can say in LWC is easy to learn next is best performance mostly browser know only three things to render a web page 
those are html css and javascript and in lwc we are writing most of the code in all these native languages so performance is very high because in this case there is no need for additional web browser engine operation to convert the code as per the browser requirement or we can say there is no extra abstraction layer and code is already in browser compatible format and as we have seen in previous slides lwc built on top of latest javascript features or web standards so obviously there will be a better performance with lwc and all the code browser understand by default so there is no need for additional layer and all the things next we have coexist aura components so we can easily use these lightning web components is aura components as well but vice versa is not possible like uh, we cannot call our aura component in lwc so this is also a good feature like we can call our lwc in aura and we can establish data communication also like we can pass data from lwc to aura and vice versa also possible next we have better security so for security salesforce implemented a additional layer on top of lwc that is lightning locker service locker service enforce security by wrapping each lightning component in its own container and locker service is enabled by default for all custom lightning web components in nutshell we can say whatever request we are uh, processing through the lightning web component to the salesforce like to the apex or uh, in the salesforce those are passed through the lightning locker services so if salesforce found any malicious request in that case request can be controlled at there only so we can say with the help of lightning locker services we have better security in lwc next we have out of box components salesforce provides many built in components for general purpose like data table cards button input control and many more these are very helpful because we do not have to write code for everything so with the help of these pre built components we can quickly complete our development next we have unit testing support this is also a good advantage with lwc we can write unit test also with the lwc with the help of jest framework now next we have why salesforce launched lwc if aura was already there so aura was built in 2014 at that moment webstack was not powerful and if you see in this image lots of the features were platform specific not native if you see in 2014 web standard was very small if you will see web standards in 2014 then you can see less options are available here and more options were developed by the frameworks and if you will see web standards in 2019 then most of the features were part of web standard itself and only few features are the part of frameworks so this was the biggest reason behind that because if a framework will use web standards in that case performance will be very good and in case of aura many features were built on the framework level so the performance with the aura was little bit slow that's why salesforce built a new framework in 2019 in which they included all the web standards and on top of that they added their few layers for security and for data access and for rebuild components next we have in how many ways we can create lightning components in salesforce so generally we can develop lightning components in two ways first is the aura lightning component and second is lightning web components so aura was available in 2014 and lightning web components available in 2019 next we have can aura components and lightning web components can coexist together then the answer is we can call lightning web components in aura components but vice versa is not possible that means we cannot call aura components into lightning web components and if we want to call lightning web components into aura component then this will be the syntax next is can we create lightning web components in developer console then the answer is no we have to use visual studio code or code builder and we can say visual studio code is a id for local development and installation is required for this and code builder is a web based id 
you do not need to install anything for this but this is in beta version right now if you want to use this one then you need to request to the salesforce for this they will provide you access for limited time period next question we have explain about lightning like web component bundle so we can say mainly lwc consists of three files html js and meta file and we can also add two more files if required that is css and svg in html file whatever you want to show to the user as a ui that we will write in html file and here we can write any html tag or we can use any lightning component next is js file this is a required file with every component and also this is a main file where we will write all the logics of our component like if you want to fetch data from salesforce and if you want to save data into salesforce and if you want to perform any calculation we will do in this file only and we will register all our events to manipulate our dom in this js file only so we can say this is the main file of our component next we have meta.xml this is a kind of configuration file where we can define few settings regarding component like where we can use this component what will be the name for this component what will be the icon for this component and all the things in next slide i'll be discussing on this one next we have css file if you want to specify custom styling for the component then we can create css file by default it is not created by cli but additionally we can create it with the component name next is svg file we can say it is an icon which is visible in app builder with component name now next question is explain meta xml file properties you can see over here we have lots of properties so let me explain one by one here on line number 3 we can define salesforce release version next we have is exposed property so whenever we want to expose our component to be used in lightning pages in that case we can define it true else it won't be available to be used in lightning pages like it won't be available over here uh, if you can see this uh, area like whatever component we have created and uh, if those are available to be used on pages those those pages should be marked as is exposed true else they will not come up over here and we won't be able to use them into lightning pages directly we can use them into another component but we cannot add them directly into the lightning page or anywhere into the salesforce directly next is master label with the help of this property we can define component name like you can see over here best component ever so this is the name that we have defined and if we didn't use this property in that case here we can see the component file name itself next we have description description will be visible when we will hover on that component name so you can see over here in the highlighted image so this is the description next and important property is targets so in targets we can define like where our component can be used in salesforce as you know like we have different kind of pages in app builder like record page app page and home page and community page and many other things are there so here we need to specify like where we can use our component so i have specified over here like uh, this component can be used in record page app page and home page and if i want to use in community also in that case i can specify over here okay next we have target config so in targets we can define all the areas where we can use the components like record page app page and home page but if we want to specify for particular record page in that case we can specify in target config like i have specified like i can use this component in account opportunity and warehouse component uh, warehouse object so in the target config we can specify particular pages also and i can also define the property over here so let me explain like what is the use of this property so when we are going to use this component anywhere in in salesforce let's say we are going to use this component in lightning app builder pages then if we want to give a option to the admin to specify some variable values then we can define that in the property so you can see in the right part 
I'm here for app, app page. So you can see I have tar specified target that is app page and home page. So whenever I'm going to use this component in app page, then I can see a checkbox because I have used uh, type boolean over here. So checkbox is already created over here. So admin can specify value for this one. And we have defined a variable in component itself. So whenever this component will be called through this page, then that value, this value will be auto populate over there. For another example, let's say like if you want to specify the grid page size or table page size, then you can create a number text box over here and give a option to admin. Like he can define whatever, how much page size he wants, then you can define over here and in your component, you can get it and apply on your grid. So this is how you can give options to the admin to configure some parameters or to some variable values. Okay. Next we have, can I deploy component with empty CSS file? Then the answer is no, you cannot deploy component with blank CSS file. In that case, you will get a deployment error. So that's it for this video. In next video, we will cover questions related to little advanced topics like what are decorators, component lifecycle hooks, how to communicate data between components, what is LMS, lightning message services, what is lightning data services and how we can call apex methods okay so please subscribe my youtube channel so you will get notification for further videos thank you so much for watching this video i will see you in next video